Hi guys, FM Campbell here, um, and welcome to what is technically update number two of the trophy hunt challenge against Tiki Taka Master. Um, obviously, as you know, we took on Chelsea. Um, before we go any further, I just wanted to show you these two goals. Um, I've been telling myself to show you these, so we'll show you them now. Um, I'll go through all what's been going on and what's been happening in, in just a moment. Um, so we want to find the third game, so let's see if we can... We all know what David Luiz is like in real life. Um, he's a bit of a extrovert, he gets involved and he, he's... He can, well, I'm sure that Chelsea fans get a little bit worried, but watch this. So this is against CSK in Moscow. Thinks, you know what, I'll go for it. Somehow manages to put it away. Akin Fee's had an absolute mare. And that turned out what to be the fourth goal. Um, so let's leave this one. We'll go back to the fixtures. And the next one, I think it was in this game. Yes, there's a free kick here. And like I said about David Luiz... So he takes this free kick, like he did the last one. He thinks, I'll go for it again. And somehow manages to put it absolute top bins. And has just put it away. Um, so I wanted to show you them, really. Just two out of the ordinary goals. We all know what FM can be like. But for David Luiz to do it twice in the space of a couple of weeks, um, I thought was quite ironic and quite funny. So I wanted to share that, share that with you. Okay, um, also now, as you can see, I am about to play Arsenal in the league away. Um, so we'll play that through first, and then I'll go into a little bit of detail of what's happened um, since the last update. So we'll look at the team selection. All right, David Luiz is obviously injured, so we'll bring in John Terry. Um, Sacho can replace him on the bench. Let's bring Ashley Cole to left back. Playing against his old club, remember? Um, and we'll bring Ben Davies in for Bertrand. Ramirez is fit. How fit is he? Yeah, he's fit enough. So we'll start Ramirez for Lampard. And we'll bring Lampard onto the bench for Scherler. We want to play Eden Hazard. So Pastor comes in. I'm going to start Eto. Simply for the sheer fact, is you'll find out later on that um, I haven't really got a goal-scoring striker at the minute. Um, both Eto and Lewandowski are both playing abysmally, if that's a word. Um, Kadira will bring in. I think that's what we'll go for. Aspilicueta is still not fit. Yeah, that's what we'll go for. Um, should he be a poacher? Yeah. We'll do that. No, we'll, we'll have him support. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to the game. This is Arsenal away, so it's at the Emirates. Um, quite a tough game. I know Arsenal have been struggling in the league, um, but Arsenal is still Arsenal. They've still got a great calibre of players. Um, so we'll see how we get on. And we'll listen to the assistant for now. But Podolski on his weaker foot, and we'll go hard. And then we know how bad he is with injuries. Um, Bent now, he's terrible anyway. But we'll just keep him on weaker foot. Kevin De Bruyne sold him for 22 million. He's not even playing. Um, same with Chamberlain. Let's keep him on hard. Kolchiani, Benekafobe. We'll just put him on his weaker foot just in case. Obviously, Giroud's only left-footed. Juan Real. We'll keep him on his right foot. Um, Andy's not very fit, so we'll go hard on him. Uh, massive game, obviously. Viviano's playing over Chesney, that's strange. All my scouts are telling me to go get Chesney. Um, he's sent to pick up where they left off. We did play very well last time, so it's not too bad. A lot of people do this, the passionate thing, it just seems to normally work for people. Um, so we'll try that, I don't usually do that myself. Right, so here we go, we'll start the game. Um, it's in key, um, hopefully you can see this quite clearly. Uh, so we'll keep it on 3D for now. 
Um, so we get a corner straight away. Matt puts the ball in. Oh, straight across the box. So let's keep it going. 28 minutes in. Oh god, get rid of it. Oh, checks on the May. He's patted it down. What's he doing? He says he's done brilliantly. He's not really. Apologise if you can hear my fan. Um, it goes a bit crazy for some reason when I'm in game. Um, which is a bit frustrating, but it's okay. So Ramirez gets the ball. Nathaniel Klein's been playing very well. Mata takes it round. Monreal. Eto! Bang! 1 0. I say with strikers ain't been scoring. Eto's just got his third in two. So hopefully that stays the same. If we can keep that throughout the season, that seems to have been my problem. And as you can see, Arsenal are in 14th. So they're really struggling. Um, you can also see that Man United have kind of run away with the league at the moment. Um, struggling a little bit in the league. Just against the lesser teams, I suppose. Um, but I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. So here's Arteta, and Arteta shoots and check with a great save, puts it around the post. So United have just gone 1 0 up against Tottenham. Giroud off the line, Ashley Cole. So yeah, Man United have gone 1 0 up against Tottenham. So as you can see, they're just 8 points clear of me at the moment, and they've got a game in hand. So, kind of struggling to catch them at the moment. They're really in form. City are 2 0 up, and Rooney's just got a second for United. So, yeah, Wilson's assistant, that's fine. We'll copy this passionate thing. Maybe that's something FM need to sort out about just talking to them passionately individually. Right, so we start the second half. Oscar winning the ball straight from the centre. Let's keep this at 1 0, just for now. I am playing on the counter, although. Ugh. Don't let him run at you, so that's poor. You see Arsenal have obviously done the Vela thing where they've done his release clause and brought him back to the club, I think for like 3.5 or something. Um, Pazora plays it backwards wheelie. If we can win that, we do. It's 3 against 1, it's 4 against 1, 5 against 1. Cross it. Oh, Hazard, boom. 2-0 at the Emirates. It's one of our London rivals. Eden Hazard, who I struggled to get into form at the beginning of the season. Um, even though we were playing very, very well, we managed to tuck that away nicely for us. Just playing on the counter, you can really see the tactics coming into play in this game. So Kazula clears it to Giroud. Plays it to De Bruyne. Is he going to get it in the box? He has. Oh, if he'd have scored... Swear to God, a 20, although 22 million is a great deal for him, considering he's not even starting for him. Alright, so right 84th minutes, let's make some changes. Um, we'll just play out this. So Viviano clears it, goes straight to Gadira. Oscar picks it up. So Mata loses the ball to Ramsey, who's played it long. Is the keeper going to get there? Yeah, right, so we'll pick this up now for a second. And we'll make a couple of substitutions, so he's looking weak. Uh, Mata will take off and we'll bring in Pastor and we'll swap him over with Eden Hazard. Um, Oscar's not playing great. Ramirez is struggling, so let's bring in we Lampard or Jakob. We'll go Jakob, he's a little bit more defensive minded. Um, Klein's struggling at right back, but we don't really have another right back to bring on as Pelequet has been injured. Um, Oscar, should we bring him off, get him, give him a rest for the next game? Yeah, we'll bring Oscar out, it's 2-0 on five minutes to go for William. Uh, we'll keep Lewandowski on the bench for now. Won't bother with a team talk. So let's just play this through and then we'll make some tactical changes. It's been a long highlight. Considering it's supposed to be key. If Bentner scores, I swear to God, great save by check. Clearly not putting on his left foot like I asked you to. Let's get rid of that, please. Keep a clean sheet. Well, Drew heads over. Tries to get the ball to get us to hurry up. So here come the changes. So we'll pause it again. We'll do the instructions. Um, actually, we'll set it to defensive for now. We'll do waste time. Be more disciplined. Get rid of the overlap. We'll keep the wing backs dropped to stay back. Much deeper defensive line. We won't work the ball into the box and we'll go more direct. Um, 
Yeah, we'll keep it on the higher tempo just so we get the ball out to the wingers nice and quickly. So we'll make the tactical change straight away. Hopefully this will just play now through to full time. So 10 seconds to go. Giroud heads over again. And boom, full time. So nice 2-0 two -nil, two -nil away win against Arsenal. Uh, we'll go calm. We'll say that they've done well. Uh, we won't do with individual because we want to keep this runner form up. Um, so it's pretty 50-50 all round. Um, Chelsea, obviously, ourselves managed to get more shots on target, which has helped. Um, United won 3-0. So they're just dominating the league at the moment. Could really do with some results against them, to be honest. So to drop some points. And I have found that obviously the bigger teams normally have like an injury spell and United have technically already gone through it. They had about eight players injured at one point out of the first team and they were still winning. Um, City are finally starting to pick up form again. They've climbed back to fifth. So that's that. So it's a nice 2-0 win. So let's quickly go through these. Um, thought we played very well. Um, look at the current form. Um, it's Vitals first goal, massive confidence boost. Maintain winning streak. I've been requesting new contracts already. Um, right, so we're going to tell a little bit what's happened since the end of the transfer window. Um, we'll start off by going through the fixtures. So as you can see, we've played a lot of games. So as you can see, first of all, we played West Ham. Sorry if I've covered two or three of these already. Um, I think this is where I left off. So 2-0 against West Ham at home. Um, with Pastor and Lewandowski getting the goals. Um, nice comfortable 2-0 victory. And we'll go into the next game, where it's our first Champions League group game. Played PSV away and we managed to win it 1-0. And William getting the goal. I think he came off the bench. Um, as you just saw, we played Arsenal away and we beat them 2-0. Um, here we beat them 1-0 at home, so we actually done the double over them over the season. Um, with Lewandowski again getting the goal. Um, then we had the our first game in the Capital One Cup, where we beat Huddersfield 2-0 away. Um, obviously, as you can see, we rested some players and eventually brought Hazard in. Um, Gary Cahill and Hazard getting the goals for us. Then is our first loss of the season. Um, as you can see through the Premier League, 4-0, um, 4-0, 1-0, 2-0, 1-0, and 1-0. So we didn't actually even concede a goal, let alone draw or win, uh, let alone draw or loss, sorry. Um, so our first conceded goal when came up against Man City, which also inevitably ended up in a in our um, first loss as well. Um, Avaro and Agredo getting the goal for him. It was actually from the penalty spot, which was a bit of a shame. Um, and then we moved on to Maribor. To, uh, we won two 0 away. Oscar and Lampard were the goals. Um, Newcastle. Then we beat one 0 at home, where Oscar again scored. Oscar's been our form player. Um, up until about two or three games ago. Then we had Everton away. We really struggled with this one. Um, quite a tight game. Um, ben Davies getting the goal. So left back getting the goal in the 84th minute. Um, then we carried on and we had our third game in the Champions League, which is where you saw the David Luiz crazy goal like I showed earlier. Um, Ashley Cole getting two from left back, as you can see with a 9.2 rating. Kadira scoring for them with the own goal. Um, they also scored an own goal with Shenikov getting one. And then I'm going to try and pronounce this. Baritzutski um, getting the consolation back with them as well. So then went to Swansea. And we went to Wales and we won 1 0. Lewandowski getting the goal. And this was quite an entertaining game, I'd imagine, for the fans. With a 3 2. Um, we started off by going 1 0 up. And then Mikel Antonio bringing two back to go 2 1 up for them. Which I then turned it around and made it 3 1 with Eto and Lampard getting the goals respectively. So that put us through to the next round of the Capital One Cup. Then we lost a funny game. This is where the results started to go the other way and United started to, to sort of take over and run away with it a little bit. As you can see, Stoke um, winning 1 0. It was at Stoke, uh, sorry, it was at Stamford Bridge as well. With Peter Crouch getting the goal in the 30th minute. Um, I won't show you the goal, but it was a mistake by Peter Cech where he dropped the ball, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Then we went back into the Champions League where we won 3-1 away at CSK in Moscow, so it was in Russia. 
um, and Hazard got one, Oscar got one, and I'm thinking there was an own goal. Yep, Shestakov got an own goal as well, and then Musa also got a consolation for them. So we'll go on. Um, the next game was against Hull, where again we were at home, so Stamford Bridge again, again a 1 0 loss. And if I'm right in saying that George Boyd, yeah, George Boyd got the goal for them in the 38th minute, a couple of yellow cards. Dominating the game, they had three shots on goal hole. Just shows you how how it can happen sometimes. Um, West Brom, we beat two one. Um, as you can see, it went to one all in the seventy third minute, and then Eden Hazard got the winner in the eighty third. Um, then we went to PSV, where you, again you saw another wonder goal from David Luiz. Um, I'm right in saying I think it was an own goal on this one as well. Yep, Jorgensen's known goal. So Pastor, Lampard and David Luiz again with that goal. Getting on the score sheet with Hildemark on the score sheet as well for PSV. Move on to Fulham. Um, again, it was away. Um, we won 2-0. Oscar getting both, as you can see the inform come in here. Then we drew 0-0 with Tottenham in the Premier League. Um, that was at Stamford Bridge. So as you can see, our home form in the league wasn't especially great at that point. And then we went to Man uh, we played again at home, so again at Stamford Bridge with um, United the visitors, uh, which we could have done with winning to be honest with you. Um, Van Persie and Rooney, it was a pretty 50-50 game, maybe we just edged it. Van Persie and Rooney getting the goals. Again, one of these was a mistake from Czech, which was a shame, but we did manage to arrange Van Persie, which I suppose I've only just seen that now. And then Pastor getting a constellation goal for us. So then we went away to Maribor where we won 2 0 in the Champions League. Um, I think I'm right in saying we won every single Champions League game so far, anyway. I think that's all the group games. Yeah, so we won every single game. Um, Pastor and Gary Cahill getting on the score sheet. Then we lost 1 0 to Sunderland away. So real, but we had three games where we, without a win in the Premier League. Um, I believe it was a Bertrand own. Yep, yeah, Bertrand own goal. Um, Oscar was injured, so he was in form and then unfortunately got injured for us. Um, then we went home at home to Stoke, where we won 2-1. Pastor and Mata getting on, on the score sheet for us. And what a game this was. Liverpool were actually favourites in this game. Um, first of all, Liverpool went 1-0 up. Then I brought it back to 1-0 with Ashley Cole penalty. Then they went 2-1 up. Steven Gerrard from the penalty spot. And then... We just run away with it. Nathaniel Klein getting one back and first, almost first thing after the Gerrard penalty. Then John Terry getting on the score sheet, getting two in <clears throat> two in six minutes, excuse me. And then Lewandowski rounding it off with a fifth in the 92nd minute. Number of yellow cards in there as well. So that was quite an entertaining game, but it was good to get back on winning terms in the league, especially at home as our form had been poor. Which was then flipped straight back round with Southampton getting a 3 2 win. We all know that Southampton are obviously a hard team to play against on this FM. Um, with the Wonder Kids that they have coming through, with the Lalanas, the Ward Prowse, Shaw, um, Rodriguez as well. Um, and as you can see, um, Hazard and Mata scoring for us with Lalana, Lambert, and Schneidlin. Schneidlin, who I've looked at by the way in signing potentially, but he's worth a little bit too much money now, so I doubt I'll go for him as cover for that much money. Then Cardiff with the visitors and we won 3-1 with David Luiz, Oscar and Eden Hazard getting on the score sheet. So Oscar coming straight back from injury to get on the score sheet again. Then we, then we had the FA Cup third round um, with Pastor and Nathaniel Klein getting on the short, score sheet for us. Then we had the Capital One Cup semi-finals and if I click this I'll show you that obviously you see that we won 3-0 and but also Reading beat Man City 2-1 um, and then which you can see as it flipped around we then drew 0-0 with Tottenham to progress to the final and City only won 1-0 so it actually means we have Reading in the final which I'll show you shortly so that went 2-0 um, uh, sorry so that went 3-0 uh, Kadira getting 2 and Lewandowski getting 1 uh, ending 3-0 which was great to take to the second leg um, then we finally had we had Palace come to Stamford Bridge where we won 4-0 which is a good result Gary Cahill, Masaccio, 
Oscar and William. As you can see, we play the second string team slightly with Scherler and Jakob playing. Um, then another home game in the league where we again got another win. So we've had a nice little run of form now um, where Villa were the visitors. Um, with John Terry and Eden Hazard getting on the score sheet. Um, so we went away to Norwich. Um, I think this was a known goal. It was John Ruddy and goal. Yeah, I clearly I can remember this now. It came off the crossbar and hit him and went in. Shame for Norwich, but it was good for us. Um, obviously, as you know, we drew 0-0 with Tottenham in the second leg of the Capital One Cup semi-final. Um, we just basically, I went for the defensive, went hit him on, tried to hit him on the counter. Um, and we managed to hold it and didn't concede over both games. So with a 3-0 win on aggregate. Um, then we just had Sunderland um, at home uh, where we beat them 3-0. Um, Gary Cahill, Samuel Eto and Roberge um, scoring the own goal. Um, so we started to catch uh, United. I think against United we were one point, something like 14 points behind them. So... I think we've brought it back down to nine, um, but they do have a game in hand. Um, as you can see, we have the Arsenal game that we just watched where Eden Hazard Neto got the goals. So that sums up all our fixtures so far. Um, obviously, you can see we've got City at home shortly. Um, it would be good to get a win against them. Then we've got a nice little two-game spell. Um, actually, a three-game spell. We've got Wolves as well, but you never know. Um, we then got Dortmund, um, unfortunately, in the draw. Um, but we do play them away first, which is handy, so we can take them back to Stamford Bridge for the second leg. I'll show you the teams that are left in it, as you can see here. So for the first leg, it's Bayern against PSG. Huge game. Great for us to see one of them being knocked out. Um, Arsenal and Sociedad. Um, likelihood of Arsenal going through is probably quite high. Um, Leon and Man United. Um, United will be the favourites. Same with Juventus in the, in the Marseille game. We're pretty 50-50 with Dortmund, although we have taken their best striker away, uh, which is good for us. Uh, Real Madrid, Schalke, with Real Madrid probably being the favourites. Same with Barcelona against Porto. And the PSV Atletico, I'll probably swing that towards Atletico, just because some of the players that they have there with them. So that's what's the likelihood with us in the Champions League. Um, as you know, we got into the Capital One Cup final, where we'll play Reading. So we've got a visit to Wembley. Which is good, halfway through the season, so we've got a second, uh, an opportunity to win our second trophy. Um, in the FA Cup we have Wolves in the fifth round. So these are the teams that are left in it. So not a lot of huge teams left. Obviously you've got United in there, Liverpool, but they still have to beat Reading. Um, Tottenham are in there, Everton are a tough team to go, but there's no City, no Arsenal. Um, so that's quite handy, so some of the big teams have already been knocked out. Um, so, as you can see, we're on quite a string to possibly win a a couple of trophies. We're still in all competitions. Um, the league looks quite a tough one. Um, we're going to need United to start dropping points, so we're going to have to keep our fingers crossed with that. And we're also going to have to continue this string of good results. Um, as we're, you can see at the end of the transfer window, I'll continue it now. Whilst you're here, we'll go to the last day. Um... A number of players that I've gone for, I've tried to go for. Um, I haven't really had a lot of money. Um, I did bring a couple of players back from loans because they weren't playing enough first team football, which I've since sent them back out. Um, as you can see, same with this one with the loan agreements. People just not playing the either players in the right positions, or they're not playing them enough. Um, so that's fine. So we'll look at the transfer history, and you'll see that we haven't done anything. Um, you know that we sent out a couple of loans. Um, I did let Hilario and Schwartz go because they were just on the wage bill. And when you release them, do a mutual termination, they do actually agree to take a little bit less money so they can go elsewhere and try and get first team football. So, Isaiah Brown, Thomas Callas, um, Boga, Ang Bang, um, Zuccolini, Van Ginkel, McEachran, um, Colquitt. I brought them all back and sent them all back out on loans as they weren't playing enough football or they weren't being played in the correct position. I did threaten with the managers to start playing them and playing them in the correct position, but if I get the report back saying they're not, then I'm, I'm going to withdraw them because I want some of these players' values to go up so I can look to sell them. As you can see, Van Ginkel's value has already gone up a couple of million. 
just an ex as one example, because I, I want them to be playing in here. Um, I don't mind if he plays left or right, but when they're playing him up front or left midfield, I'm not really too interested in that. I want them to be playing in their predominant position so their stats increase, so their values can go up because they're performing better, basically. Um, I did look to buy a new striker. I considered actually selling Lewandowski, believe it or not. Um, just because of the mere fact he's not getting enough goals. He should be a 20-plus goal scorer. Um, in other saves that I've played, he has been. I just haven't been able to get him scoring. Um, he's just out of form consistently. So he's in quite a bit of rotation at the moment with Samuel Eto'o. Um, one player, though, that I have looked at um, is this guy here. Alexander Mitrovic, who I've made a couple of inquiries for. Um, he's recently got injured, so I probably won't be able to get him now. Um, but I've declared interest a couple of times. Um, I just wanted him as a third-choice striker, really. As you can see, he's only a youngster, so I could probably sell him. But he's got 23 goals in 28 appearances this season. Average rating of 7.52. For a 19-year-old, I know it's in Belgium, at Anderlecht. But Romelu Lukaku was in the same position. Plus he's six foot two, so he's huge. He's only nineteen. He's still going to keep growing. His strength's incredible. Um, his heading's good, and his jumping reach is fourteen. So for a nineteen-year-old, a target man, I think that's superb. So I was really looking to bring him in. Um, who else have we got? So let's we looked at Thomas Martinez, who I'm currently got a bid going through for six million. Um, his release clause is 6.5. I managed to get it from 6 million. Real Madrid are also interested, so whether they'll make a bid as well. I just think I'll be able to sell him for about 10 to 15 million um, at the end of the season. So I'll get him out on loan. If Real Madrid take him and play him, then bonus. But for 6 million, I'm not too sure. Um, I'm considering withdrawing. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, so. Also, 31st of December hit has gone as well, which is always a good day for clubs because you can get players on frees. So I've got Eduardo Vargas coming on a free. He's worth 2.6 million, so hopefully that'll double. So I reckon I can probably sell him for about 5 million just to go towards other players. Um, Sergio Romero, very good goalkeeper. Um, he's coming on a free. He's worth 3.8 at the moment. Um, average rating, um, 7.08, so it's not great. Um, but we're going to be getting quite a bit of money for him, I'd imagine, when he comes. He's only 26 as well. Um, that's Thomas Martinez, who we've looked at. Manuel Fernandez, as we all know, is a very good player on this game. Um, signing him on a free. He's, I think he's coming on about 25 grand worth of wages, which is really good. Um, so if I wanted to loan him out um, or sell him straight away, I reckon I could probably get about 10, 10 to 15, maybe, million out of him because he was value or double when he comes to us. Um, his technical attributes are superb. He's ridiculously good. So I may consider keeping him. I'm not too sure yet. Um, it's a shame his tackling isn't better. Um, to put him in the middle. So he's coming on a free. Um, Giuseppe Belushi, um, centre back. I've had him before. He's just an all round, not too bad centre back. His value's not great, but he, he wanted something like, I think it's like 12 grand a week or something. Um, so he's joining us. Um, if we can improve his jump in a little bit um, and maybe look at selling him, obviously we can do. Um, he's, he would basically be someone loaned out. Um, and that's that. So that's all the transfer business we've really done. I haven't really looked to bring in any players apart from a striker. Um, but I did look at Falcao, but they wanted him 50 million plus. So unless someone offered me that sort of money for Lewandowski, um, or I could do, I did attempt a swap deal as well, which didn't go through. So, unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to stick with what I've got and hope that Lewandowski or Eto come into form. Um, I did also look at a couple of loan deals, just as a third choice striker, um, but I haven't needed them. I, it's as simple as that. The rotation works for me, um, so injuries have been sort of minimal. Um, touch wood, it stays that way, and we don't get a, a spell where we have loads at the same time. Um, but, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much how it's going. Um, the next update I will probably do um, in the Capital One Cup final. Um, I'll probably play that live for you guys to see. Um, it's against Reading, so we are expected to win it, although you never know what can happen on this game, unfortunately. Um, finances are good. 
Um, the balance isn't great at the moment, but obviously we're making profit, so that should turn round because um, I have brought the wages down quite a lot. Um, if I show you actually the under 21s, look at the amount of players I have out on loan just to save the club a little bit of money and obviously eventually sell. I mean, for instance, um, there's some players here like Romeo, 2.4 million, um, Kalas, 2.7 million, Omaru, 4.3 million. Um, Ivanovic, I actually have a £10 million pound deal um, in place, so I've got a lot of money coming in at the end of the season, hopefully, um, for some of these players. Milosevic got him for 350k, he's slowly going up all the time and playing quite well as well. Um, I might get rid of Czech because Courtois is crazy good, um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but obviously, I've got Romero coming in as well, and we also have Julio Cesar who's been actually quite good for us. Um, it doesn't really reflect in his average rating, but he was our first team keeper during that spell at the beginning of the season where we didn't concede up until the Man City loss. Um, he was my keeper for the for all of these games. So he was obviously doing something right, along with the defence, I suppose. Um, so yeah, like I said, my next update will probably be a live showing of the Cup to One Cup final. Well, we aim to get another trophy. Well, I'll give an update on all these games here. Um, including the first knockout round of the Champions League um, and also the FA Cup against Wolves. Um, so yeah, um, obviously Tiki Taka Master will do his own update as well. I know this has been a long video but there's been a lot of games. Um, he'll do his up own update as well. Um, so check his channel out. Um, it's, it'll be in the description below. Um, so yeah, if there's anything that you want to ask or anything that you think's um quite interesting excuse me that's my phone um, more than welcome to put in the comment section below so yeah um, we'll keep this going fingers crossed we'll win more trophies um, you've been listening to FM Campbell and we'll see you in the next update